Welcome to Climbing Together, the small business experience. I'm Beth Howtrow, the founder of Climb the Small Business Book Club, and our episode today is brought to us by the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Center of the San Francisco Bay Area. Every episode, I talk to a small business owner about a mistake that they've made and what they learn from the experience. Mistakes are inevitable, perfection's impossible, so let's embrace the mistake. And we're so excited to welcome Armando Cervantes to the podcast. Armando, tell us more about you and your business. Beth, thank you for having me. Uh, just first off, I want to start off saying uh, I really enjoy your Instagram clips on how you summarize books. Uh, it's really kept me going a lot with uh, like my own entrepreneurial uh, journey. Awesome, I appreciate it. Uh, so uh, I'm Armando Cervantes, owner of Stu the Llama. Uh, we specialize in Peruvian hot dogs. Uh, we use exclusively Casper's famous hot dogs, and we top them with gourmet Peruvian sauces. Best hot dogs in the Bay. Best hot dog, <laughs> one of the best hot dogs you'll ever have. And are you brick and mortar? Are you selling at pop ups? How are you? Where where can people find you? So right now I'm I'm popping up mostly around the East Bay, uh, okay. popping up at different breweries, dispensaries, uh, even doing catering events. Nice. Uh, but the goal is to have uh, like a chain of Peruvian fast food restaurants. Okay, very cool. I love it. All right, Thanks. well, let's jump into it. We're here to talk about mistakes. So, talk to me about a mistake that you've experienced as you're growing this business. Okay, so uh, the main this I'm about, I'm about to pro- approach one year with my business. Uh, tomorrow is actually the anniversary of Stu the Llama. So, uh, just you know, one year into the business. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I neglected my health a lot in the first part of uh, you know the year of starting uh, starting this, and I think like as an entre- as an entrepreneur, someone just starting something off, uh, you want to really go all in to whatever you're doing, and like your health is something that you tend to neglect a lot. Like, mm-hmm. and for me, like one of my I, uh, like one of the ways I handle stress, where I have handled stress, is I'll eat. I just I just like to munch. Like, oh, some you know something went wrong today. Or like, oh, I just got to eat a bag of chips or something. And over time, I started noticing that it was just affecting my performance, uh, interacting with customers. Uh, I'd wake up in the morning not really feeling energized, and my mood was off sometimes. And you know, starting something off when it's mainly by you know me by myself, like I just I needed to fix that. Like I needed to you know to be a better version of myself. Yeah. And uh, so I you know I started going to the gym, and something. And also one thing is I noticed. A lot of successful people that I look up to, uh, they tend to be very, you know, healthy and Mm -hmm. they don't, a lot of them don't really speak about their health, but if you really, you know, start, you know, looking at them and seeing, you know, what they do on the day to day, uh, they really prioritize like eating healthy and going to the gym. So, uh, that's something that I learned and sleep, sleeping is crucial. That's, you know, six, eight hours minimum, obviously eight is great, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And people think that exercise is like a luxury if you have time for it, but it's not, it's essential, mm-hmm. right? You, it gives you more time because it gives you more energy and you're better to, you're able to perform better. Um, if you're eating well, you're exercising, you're sleeping. Um, and so, yeah, it's so important not to think of that as a luxury, but it, uh, it's something that's essential. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. And have you, is it really, I mean, do you feel like a big change? Has it really helped kind of boost your enthusiasm for the business? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, it's funny. I just I just really started eating healthier uh, like two weeks ago. Okay. I, I, I had a friend who he has uh, he has his own business and um, he's like Armando, you just like even if you you don't want to eat healthy, just only eat between eleven a.m. to seven p.m. Mm-hmm. Aside from that, like just drink water like fast during the day, and trust me, it's gonna help you a lot. You know, a lot in like not being hungry, and it's just gonna help you function a lot better. And I started doing that and I started, you know, changing it to eating healthy. This Friday, I kid you not, like I woke up like at seven and I felt like my eyes were just like, you know, just fully wide open. And I just, I felt happier. And even just interacting with my customers, I just feel, I feel better. Like I feel like I'm uh, more receptive to like feedback and yeah. uh, just, you know, wanting to learn more and just wanting to to keep it growing. Yeah. That not eating late at night thing. Eating late at night is so disruptive of our sleep. And it's not something a lot of people realize or think about. It's something uh I teach until nine o'clock at night, a lot of nights. And I was eating after, right? Getting the food. So finishing at 10 and it was so bad, Uh right? And now, now I make sure I eat, I have food ready and eat during my break and I'm done by 7.15 or 7.30 and that's it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and even, even that, like, it just helps out like so much more. Like you just wake up better. Yep. Absolutely. Sleep better, wake up better. So yeah, I love that. All right. Awesome. So. 
We are brought, this podcast is brought to you by Climb the Small Business Book Club, and our mantras are about continual learning and community. So talk to me about your business book reading and kind of your continual learning process. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I love reading, you know, different business books. Uh, what the way, the way I like to learn is I, I like to find, uh, sometimes I'll be listening to a podcast and someone will recommend a book or, you know, I'll sometimes catch, you know, something that you post on Instagram. Like most recently you posted like the e-myth, right? Uh, yeah. So I, I don't remember exactly when it was, Beth, but you back posted in March, that. Was a while ago, yeah. <laughs> okay. So see, it was, I knew it was a while back ago because I just remember seeing it and, and I had that book in my bookshelf, but I just never touched it. And then one day I'm on YouTube and that, that clip came on, like just Michael, you know, Gerber speaking, listen to one like full like speech that he had, read the book in two days the next day. And then I just, uh, the way I like to learn is I like to just watch interviews with uh, like the author and stuff just to really understand uh, why they, you know, why they, uh, you know, wrote this book in the first place and like the experience they had teaching it to other people. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. E-Myth Revisited is such a great like foundation for small business owners. Mm -hmm. There's moments in it where I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if this is true anymore. You know, that's kind of the way it is with every business book that I don't hundred yeah. percent. I agree with like 95% of that book though. It certainly is a foundation. I think there's the whole idea about systems, about being able to work in your business and not always, I'm sorry, on your business and not always in your business, right? Those are really core things yeah. that people need to learn. Um, so yes, I was delighted by that book in particular because it's written for small business owners. Most books are yeah. not written for small business owners, right? And so. Exactly. Yeah. And like, uh, like, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Like the, uh, like the, the one thing that, that really like stayed in my head about uh, that book is like, don't focus so much on like just your single product that you're selling, focus on like your, your business as a product. So like, yeah. even if, if you're not, if you don't want to have a chain or you don't want to have, you know, a bunch of different locations, build your business in a way that it is like it's someone could buy your business tomorrow, you know? Yep. Well, and for you, cause you do want to build a chain. It's like the perfect mm -hmm. book, right? It's, it is, it's a book, book about amazing. how you build a franchise, right? That's what that book is for. So, yeah. yeah. What, what was the what was the one thing, Beth? That uh, what's what's something that you don't agree with in that book? Like, well, I think there's a balance between working in and on your business, and I think some business owners mm -hmm. go so fully to the working on that they hire too many employees that they can't afford, and so there has to be some oh, yeah, yeah. steady space of growth that you are hiring at a pace because sometimes you do need to work in your business also, if that's financially what's necessary. So that was just the one thing that um, I thought maybe, I think sometimes business books are too like, this is a hundred percent how things should be without like a, this is how it should be over time with some steps and working, you know, into it. So yeah, that, he also has some pretty weird things to say about women on occasion, but. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I want to say like, I, I agree on what you're saying about, uh, the part of where it like hiring people and stuff. And I feel like this is the sort of book that you need to find when you're in deep trouble. Like just so you really at this point, you're you've exhausted all different ideas and you're like, Oh, this is the right way to find, like, this is the right way to do it. Well, systems are important from the beginning. And I, I kind of like that this woman was in trouble and you can see how bad it could get right in that book, the way he tells it. And, and systems aren't this, a solution for everything, but I have multiple interns that work with me um, for like mm -hmm. college credit, that kind of thing. And I have mm -hmm. all the systems that they use written out and designed. So when they come on, there's some onboarding, but very little because I've taken the time to write all that out. And that's a lot of what he talks yeah. about is if you can just create systems and then I give them space to do research and make advice on how to improve things. But to get started and to get going, they have an immediate set of like, there's videos, there's checklists. And they're oh, that's just really writing good, Beth. That's, yeah. It's good that you do that. Well, if you have interns or turnover every three months, you better have some good <laughs> systems. See, that's what I'm saying. You start you start thinking like, well, how do I make these interns stick longer, you know? Well, they're, it's intentional, right? They're, they're yeah. free interns are getting, it's a, it's a semester, it's whatever it oh, is. Oh, gotcha, right? gotcha. So, yeah. So it's understandable. That's the, the intention of the internship is a learning opportunity. But yeah. Cool. So, yeah, just um, that's such a great book. I'm so glad you mentioned it. OK, so the other thing we're big on, right, is community. And I know you're a member of the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Community. 
So talk to me about mm-hmm. Renaissance and what that experience was like for you. If you still have relation, uh, like interactions with Renaissance and what that's like. Yeah. So um, like Ren Center was something that I I found by, by mistake, you know, just really just trying to figure out how to start my business. Uh, and I started, you know, with your class, Beth, uh, with uh, the business planning course. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful for that experience because I feel like when you're starting off a business, you don't have that many people that understand what you're going through. Like they don't understand the, the entrepreneurial journey. They don't understand how it is to start from nothing to, to yeah. want to create something. And, you know, that, that class specifically uh, to anybody who hasn't taken that class and is thinking about it, it really it gives you like the foundations of a business, but it also just puts you around just really cool people. Like the only thing that, that I wish I had taken that class, like not, you know, during the pandemic, because a lot of those people were really cool. I, I really liked a lot of my, uh, you know, my classmates in that. And I still keep up with them on Instagram. Like I see how they're doing and it, it makes me happy to see them growing as well. Yeah. And like keeps me, you know, wanting to go to. Nice. Awesome. Have you seen the pop-up accelerator class? Are you aware of that? I, I've seen it. I've seen it, Beth. I just, anytime the class is going, I, I have something going on, but I, I, I do want to eventually do it. I recommend it. Yeah. It's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> Jotting it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so, so, so many classes in Renaissance, but I'm glad that business planning class was a good experience. I think what you mentioned about people don't get it, right? It's just such a classic thing for small business owners is, they're not surrounded by people who understand what they're going through. And so it's so important to have other people um, to support you, to commiserate with you, right? Mm-hmm. To just to get you, to see you and know what. Just, just to get you there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Armando. Well, that was the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks, Beth. Well, uh, thanks again for having me. And uh, yeah. yeah, keep doing what you do. I really, I really um, get inspired a lot by like, you know, the posts. And- oh, I appreciate that. Well, you keep doing what you're doing. Someday I'll make it out into the East Bay and get a Peruvian hot dog. Okay. Thanks, man. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Climb the Small Business Book Club, where entrepreneurs go to learn, discuss, apply, and grow. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe at Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or follow us on Instagram at Climb Book Club. And always remember, mistakes are inevitable, perfection's impossible. So let's embrace the mistake. <laughs>